It's preaching time. I want to uh, settle in on uh, a text. Let me read it uh, to you. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Psalm 116. Uh, it is familiar to us. Uh, we've heard it. We may not be able to quote it as easily as the 23rd Psalm, but it will ring familiar to us. And I want to share some of the reasons why it does as a part of our message on today. Amen. Amen. Listen for God's word through the Spirit. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplication. Because he inclines his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I call on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O oh my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walked before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is alive. What shall I render to the Lord? all his bounty to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my mom I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice <clears throat> and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Purchase 
my suit and take it home. Uh, as a helper there, yeah. who, who said, try it on. Yeah. And when I try it on, and it almost fits, then there is a skilled tailor uh -huh. somewhere around that looks at how uh, uh, it fits on me. That's right. That's right. And then that person uh, uh, will make some suggestions and recommendations and, and some adjustments. Somebody say adjustments. Yes. Make some adjustments so that that garment is not just a general garment anymore. But when I take it home, it ought to be customized so that it fits on me. Am I making sense? Yeah. And, 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 and so as, as, as God, as a servant of the word today, uh, I want to pretend that uh, I am uh, the tailor uh -huh. in the shop. Uh -huh. And uh, the song is the gun. Uh, that needs to be customized uh, so that uh, it looks like it fits on you. Can I work with that today? Now, now, now it's a good garment. It's, it's, it's a great garment. It's a great. It's a great. It's, it's, it's elegant material. When you read one sixteen, uh, uh, the reason you like it is because it, it fits you. What is said by it started out as somebody's psalmist testimony, but the reason is scripture now is because there's a way that this psalm uh, uh, has the potential to fit everybody. You're talking about who the Lord is and what the Lord has done. The reason we're here on uh, Lynching Wednesday is because of the Lord. Is that right? Amen. Amen. And so we are we are wearing uh, uh, we are wearing the garments of grace and the garments of salvation and the garments of mercy. Am I right? Tonight? But I want you to look good. So let's work with this for just a few minutes, and let's see if we can uh, get you to kind of uh, customize uh, your testimony so that it's not just a generic psalm hanging on a clove rack in mind. I want you to be able to lead and serve where it has come and look at that. It belongs to you. The psalm starts out uh, as uh, this personal uh, uh, testimony and it's come. Uh, let's make it personal. So I've divided the psalm uh, for preaching purposes into two parts. The first part I'll call uh, reasons. Uh -huh. okay. Reasons. Reasons. There are some reasons uh, that the psalmist lays out when he walks inside of this psalm. The psalmist says, I love the Lord. Uh, now, does anybody love the Lord? Yeah. Uh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. The psalmist says, I love the Lord. Now, you don't just look for nothing. You love the Lord uh, because, and there are some reasons listed in here uh, that might apply uh, not just to the Psalms, uh, uh, but might apply to you. Can walk inside of this one uh, I love the Lord uh, because, and, 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 and love is a relationship. Am I right? Uh, uh, and, so, and, so, and so I want you to get in touch with your own reasons. For the love of the Lord. You said you loved him. Uh, you got any reasons why you love him? Uh, 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 make a list of uh, why you love the Lord. Think about why you, why you, not, not why I know why I love the Lord. Uh, but, but your neighbor who said they love the Lord may have some different reasons than you have. But you ought to be in touch with your own reasons why you want to wear the suit of grace and and call out the name of the Lord. The psalmist said, I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my cry for mercy. I love that. I can 
can claim that too. I love the Lord because the Lord has a listening ear. Am I right, somebody? I, I love the Lord because I don't have to pray up against an empty sky. I love the Lord because uh, uh, He hears. Not, not only does He hear, I love the Lord because He hears my voice. Now my voice ain't your voice. And then your voice ain't your voice. But the Lord knows me when I cry. And the Lord hears my voice. The Lord has a personal sense of who I am. When He hears my voice, He knows my name. And He knows my situation. And He doesn't get my cry mixed up with somebody else. I love the Lord because He hears. He hears my voice. Can I get a witness? I'm just trying to get you to type this clothes. Uh, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my cry for mercy. And then the psalmist said, I love the Lord because when I was near death, that's what the psalmist said, when I was near death, the Lord rescued me. Huh? If you, if you, uh, when I was near death, Lord, rescue me. You got any witnesses out there? I, yeah, I got a few hands waving out there. Now, that same like it might pick you. When I was what? Near death. I, when I was close to death, uh, the Lord uh, rescued me. Now, now it really it fits all of us. Uh, some of us, watch well, it, some of us uh, know we've been near death. The rest of us were near death and didn't know it. Yeah. Uh, because he was keeping you through dangers seen and unseen. You don't even know the last time you were on the edge and could have tipped on over. And that could have been your call last night that Pastor Jenkins talked about. Am I right, somebody? Because I love the Lord because when I was near death, and if you've ever been close Hello, somebody. You ever been sick? You ever been in a situation where death was near and uh, uh, for reasons that are greater than your health, you got pulled back out of them. You got raised up from You got healed through <laughs> And you know, if it had not been, Am I, am I 
I'm teaching to people. Am I talking to people shopping in the same store? Am I talking to people trying on the same garment that I'm trying on? And it's, it's, it's fitting because all of the things that the psalmist gives testimony and witness to are things that also belong in my testimony. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. How dare you to think about God's goodness to you? You see, this is really a kind of a short storm because if you took it in personal life, if you counted your blessings and named them one by one and uh, all of the measurements that fit because of how good God has been to you. As a matter of fact, in right in the middle of my preaching, why don't I stop for about 30 seconds and let you whisper to a neighbor something that belongs in your testimony about how good the Lord has been to you. I mean, right now, just turn to your neighbor and tell them how good the Lord is. Tell them one thing about how good the Lord is. Tell them Pouring over me. 
me with all of this uh, robe of righteousness and the suit of salvation I'm dressed up in, being rescued uh, from my sins and from death and all of that. Uh, uh, and it's, it's a relationship. What is my response to the goodness of God to me? Hello, somebody. What is my response? Response. What is my response? What is love's response? You know, love has to respond. That's right. That's right. When love, when you, if you, if you, if if we're gonna love, then 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 love has to be given, but then something has to be. Salvation he has done. Yeah. That all the sex of the world looking on. Yeah. Look, 
Look at, look at what the Lord did. Look at what the Lord did. What shall I remember? Here's what the psalmist decided. You figure out how you're going to do it. The psalmist said, I will, I will, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Now, when I think about people lifting up cups, uh, when people are used, they got a cup with something in it. And when they lift it up, they salute you. That's a salute. Is that right? Uh, that's a public action to salute somebody. Uh, make it a toast. Is that right? You understand what I'm saying? And the psalmist said, uh, 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 but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in my cup. I'm going to get in my crowd. I'm going to raise my cup. I'm going to toast up. I'm going to give God a toast for all the things he has done for me. And I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. Y'all, I know you didn't call it on him, but have you called on him publicly lately? Has anybody heard the word lately? Has anybody else know how you feel about the God who has felt so good about you? I will toast God, give tribute, lift up my cup, public recognition and praise for the God who has saved me and who has blessed me and who has taken care of me. Secondly, he says this. You find it down in there. I will, uh, uh, I will, uh, I will pay my vows unto the Lord. Pay my vows. You know what a vow is? That's a promise. That's a commitment. I will pay my vows uh, to the Lord in the presence of His people. Is that what the Bible says? I will pay my vows. Now, no, wait, wait a you can't pay a vow that you're going to make. First of all, I got to make a vow. And then I got to honor the vow I paid. In other words, God is committed to me and I'm committed to God. This is a relationship that I need to. Sometimes I need to uh, let people know how committed I am to God. That's right. That's right. Is that right? right. Now I'm not talking about being braggadocious. I'm talking about being a witness. Yes, sir. Am I right, tonight? Yes, sir. Yeah, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will make a commitment uh, to God. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the present. I will make a commitment. I will invest it to God who has invested in me. And let it be known that I'm one of the ones who is supporting God's cause because of what the Lord has done for me. Grace ought to uh, inspire some vows. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the relationship. Uh, grace. How much did the Lord save you from? <laughs> and what are you going to do about it? No, no, I'm sorry. What are you going to do with it? Yeah, that's right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Because this is customized in my testimony. I'm going to raise up my cup. Yes, sir. I'm going to salute God. I'm going to raise a torch to God. Yes, sir who took my raggedy life and dressed me up in his grace and blessed me with his blessing, heard my cry, saved my life. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell somebody. Somebody going to know it wasn't Adam who did this. God touched my life and made a difference in me. I'm going to live in such a way. I'm going to make a vow. Uh, for the rest of my life, I'll serve you. Uh, I'm going to serve you. The rest of my And that's really the third thing that somebody said. Uh, since God has set me free, yes. tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, since, I, since, since God has loosened my bonds and taken my shackle, set me free, I'm ready uh, to take on a God saying. Yes, yes. I am God's servant. Yes, yes, yes. You know what the scripture said? It said, if God sets you free, you can't be so stuck on what you're free from that you're not open to what you're free for. That's right. That's right. God wouldn't just 
trying to get you out. God was trying to get you in. God wasn't just trying to get you out of your mess. God was trying to put you on program for the sake of the witness of the world and the gospel works in our life. Tell you what I'm going to do. Things you ought to do. Try not to put it. Raise a token to God. Sometimes break into the middle of a conversation with your friend and say, you know what God did not do? I didn't want to tell God thank you. You don't mind me telling God thank you. Let me tell you what God did for me so you understand my life. I'll raise a toast to God. And because of how good God has been to me in this Lenten season, you know what? I need to make some vows. I can't do everything God needs. But God, I can do something that God needs me to do. I can make myself available. Am I right, something like that? I can make a vow to the Lord. I can honor. I can do something that will help the cause of blessing somebody else. In the house, outside the house, or in your house. Yeah. You ought to make some vows. Somebody ought to see you honoring your commitment. Yeah. Yes. That's appreciated to God who has done so much for you. Yeah. And then sign up. Fill out an application. Get on you. Get employed in kingdom work, some kind of way. Am I right? I am your servant, Lord. I need a job. Give me something to do in your name that blesses the kingdom. Yes, sir. And when I do all of that, I'm doing it because the Lord has been so good. To I trust that I have helped you in these moments to customize your your your, your, uh, your testimony. Yeah. Uh, you look good. <laughs> it fits you. Yeah. Now get out of here and go away somewhere. <laughs>